in our last video we have studied constructional details of a practical dc machine now we have to study about armature winding so before that we will study some important terms related to armature winding that is the armature of both ac machine or dc machine now the first important term related to the winding is conductor now here this ab this is called as one conductor or cd this is called as another conductor so what is conductor the length of wire laying in the magnetic field in which an emf is induced it is called as a conductor then another important term is coil so these two conductors ab and cd along with its end connections so this forms one coil so one coil is made of two coil sides so this is called as one coil side and this is another coil side and when two coil sides are connected we will get one coil now in this coil in figure a the coil shown there is one conductor in coil side 1 and one conductor in coil side 2 so such a coil it is called as single turn coil now if number of conductors per coil side are more than one then it is called as multi turn coil for example in this figure b in this coil side there are two conductors and in this coil side there are two conductors so this coil it is called as a multi turn coil now the group of conductors in a coil side so in one coil side there can be many conductors and all these conductors are wrapped with a tape as shown in this figure c so here there are number of conductors in this coil side and all these conductors are wrapped with the help of a tape and then this forms one coil side and then it is placed in armature slot then winding element so the side of a coil we call it as a winding element so this is one winding element and this is another winding element so in every coil there are two winding elements and therefore number of winding elements are two times the number of coils because one coil is made up of two winding elements so here we have studied these four important terms conductor that is ab or cd then coil which is formed by two coil sides and two coil sides with their end connections this forms a coil then coil can be single turn or multi turn and this is called as winding element so in every coil there are two winding elements now the next important concept is the difference between electrical and mechanical angle now in figure a there is a two pole machine so when this coil is rotated through one revolution then it is equivalent to 360 degree mechanical and when it is rotated through one revolution we get one cycle of generated voltage which is also equal to 360 degree electrical and therefore in case of two pole machine we can say that theta mechanical is equal to theta electrical now in figure b there is a four pole machine now if this coil is again rotated through one revolution that is through 360 degree mechanical then we will get two cycles of generated voltage 
which is equivalent to 720 degree electrical. So, in case of a four pole machine, we can say that theta mechanical is equal to theta electrical divided by 2. Now, if number of poles are equal to 8, then in that case, theta mechanical will be equal to theta electrical divided by 4. So, in general, we can say that theta mechanical is equal to theta electrical divided by P by 2, where P is the number of poles. Now, here, you can see that between these two poles, when the conductor moves from north pole to south pole, we will get one half cycle, that is 180 degree electrical. In this case also, when it moves from north pole to south pole, we will get one half cycle, that is again 180 degree electrical. And therefore, it should be noted that the distance between two adjacent poles, the distance between the two poles, it is always equal to 180 degree electrical. Now the next important term is pole pitch. So what is pole pitch? It is the distance between two adjacent poles. So here you can see this is one pole and this is the next pole. So, the distance between these two poles, we call it as a pole pitch. So, here, if this periphery of the armature, if it is divided by number of poles, we will get the pole pitch. So, this is the periphery of armature and number of poles are 4. So, if this periphery is divided by 4, we will get the pole pitch. But in practice, this pole pitch is measured in terms of number of armature slots. So, the number of armature slots here between two adjacent poles, this is equal to the pole pitch. So, the pole pitch, it is also expressed as number of armature slots. For example, suppose these number of slots are equal to 24 and there are 4 number of poles. Then pole pitch is equal to 24 divided by 4 which is equal to 6. So here between these two poles, these number of slots are equal to 6. So, normally pole pitch is expressed as number of armature slots per pole. And again we have to remember that one pole pitch is always equal to 180 degree electrical. So, this distance is always equal to 180 degree electrical. So, next important term is coil pitch or coil span. So, it is defined as the distance between two sides of a coil. So, you can see here coil side 1, it is placed in slot 1 and coil side 2, it is placed in slot 7. And the distance between these two coil sides, it is called as coil pitch. Now, normally the coil pitch, it is measured in terms of armature slots or number of armature conductors. So, here you can see coil side 1 is in slot 1 and coil side 2 is in slot 7. So, in this case, coil pitch is equal to 7 minus 1 which is equal to 6. So, next term is full pitch coil. So, in full pitch coil, coil pitch is equal to pole pitch. For example, if pole pitch is equal to 6 
and coil pitch is also equal to 6 then this coil it is called as a full pitch coil or we say that the coil is full pitched so in case of full pitch coil the coil pitch is equal to pole pitch and as you know pole pitch is equal to 180 degree electrical so in case of full pitch coil if coil side 1 at a particular instant if it is at the middle of the north pole then coil side 2 will be at the middle of south pole at the same instant and therefore emf induced in coil side 1 and emf induced in coil side 2 these two emfs are in phase for example suppose emf induced in this coil side is e and emf induced in this coil side it is also e then resultant emf will be equal to e plus e that is 2 e so we get algebraic sum of emfs induced in coil side 1 and coil side 2 because these two emfs are in phase so in case of full pitch coil we get maximum emf induced in the coil now in practice normally short pitch or fractional pitch coils are used now in short pitch or fractional pitch coils the coil pitch is less than pole pitch so for example in this case pole pitch is 6 slots whereas coil pitch is 5 slots so this coil we call it as a short pitch or fractional pitch coil whereas this particular coil is called as full pitch coil so in this case 6 slots is equal to pole pitch and pole pitch is equal to 180 degree electrical so 6 slots is equivalent to 180 degree electrical and therefore 5 slots will be equal to 180 upon 6 into 5 that is 150 degree electrical so in this case the coil pitch is 150 degree instead of 180 degree and therefore the coil is short by 180 degree minus 150 degree that is 30 degree electrical or we can say that the coil is short by one slot and one slot is equivalent to 30 degree electrical now we will see back pitch then front pitch and commutator pitch so first of all back pitch which is denoted by y b so what is back pitch the distance measured in terms of armature conductors by which a coil advances on the back of the armature so there are two sides in the armature winding this side is called as front side or front end and this side is called as back side or back end so the commutator end it is called as front end and the other end it is called as back end so the distance between the two coil sides in terms of number of armature conductors on back side we call it as yb so here you can see what is yb this is conductor 1 and conductor 1 is connected to conductor 8 on back side so what is the back pitch it is 8 minus 1 8 minus 1 that is 7 so in this case back pitch it is 7 so this type of winding we call it as lap winding whereas this type of winding we call it as wave winding so in wave winding you can see at the back end this coil side is connected to this coil side 
so this is the back pitch so back pitch it is always measured in terms of armature conductance by which a coil advances on the back of the armature so as already seen here back pitch yb is equal to 8 minus 1 which is equal to 7 let us now see the meaning of front pitch yf so the number of armature conductors or elements spanned by a coil on the front side that is commutator side is called as front pitch and denoted by yf so here you can see that this conductor 8 is connected to conductor 3 on the front side so this is front pitch yf or in case of wave winding this is front pitch yf now the another way of defining the front pitch is the distance between the second conductor of first coil and the first conductor of next coil connected at the front end so here coil 1 it is made up of two conductors conductor 1 and conductor 8 so conductor 8 is second conductor of coil 1 and coil 2 is of conductor 3 connected to conductor 10 so first conductor of second coil it is conductor 3 so second conductor of first coil that is 8 connected to first conductor of second coil that is conductor 3 so this difference we call it as front pitch y f so in this particular case that is as shown in figure a conductor 8 is connected to conductor 3 and therefore y f is equal to 8 minus 3 which is equal to 5 actually you can say that it is equal to minus 5 because conductor 8 is connected to conductor 3 now the next term is resultant pitch yr so what is yr it is the distance between the beginning of one coil and the beginning of the next coil so here one coil is made up of conductors 1 and 8 so beginning of coil 1 is conductor 1 and the next coil is made of conductor 3 and conductor 10 so beginning of next coil is conductor 3 so beginning of coil 1 and beginning of coil 2 and the distance between them it is called as resultant pitch y r so in this case y r is the distance between conductor 1 and conductor 3 this is y r or here in this case y r this is the resultant pitch y r so in case of figure a the resultant pitch y r is equal to 3 minus 1 which is equal to 2 now for lap winding you can see that yr is equal to yb minus yf so this is yb this is yf so yr is equal to yb minus yf and in case of wave winding yr it is equal to yb plus yf now the next term related to armature winding is commutator pitch denoted by yc so commutator pitch is the distance between 
the commutator segments to which the two ends of a coil are connected so these are the two ends of the coil and these are connected to two commutator segments so this is yc in case of lap winding or this is yc in case of wave winding so for the winding shown in figure a that is for lap winding yc is equal to 1 or it can be minus 1 now there are different types of windings meaning of these windings we will see afterwards but here you can remember that in case of simplex lap winding commutator pitch yc is equal to 1 for duplex it is 2 for triplex it is 3 and for quadruplex it is 4 so next term is single layer and two layer winding now in figure a single layer winding is shown so in single layer winding there is one conductor or one coil side placed in each armature slot so here there is one conductor or one coil side placed in armature slot in case of two layer winding there are two armature conductors or two coil sides placed in each armature slot so this is called as a two layer winding in which there are two conductors or two coil sides placed in each slot and the winding is arranged in two layers so each coil in each coil there are two coil sides so one coil side is placed in upper half and the other coil side of the same coil is always placed in the lower half and that other coil side is placed in some other slot so the one coil side of each coil is placed in upper half and its other coil side is always placed in lower half and the conductors are numbered all the conductors placed in upper half they are numbered odd that is 1 3 5 and so on and all the conductors which are placed in lower half they are numbered even that is 2 4 6 and so on now let us see the meaning of multiplex winding so in multiplex winding there are several sets of completely closed and independent windings in armature slots whereas in simplex winding there is only one set of armature winding so if there is only one set of closed winding then that winding is called as simplex winding whereas if there are two sets of armature winding on the same armature then it is called as duplex winding and so on means if there are three sets it is called as triplex winding if there are four sets it is called as quadruplex winding then because of multiplexing there is increase in number of parallel paths and as number of parallel paths are increased there is increase in current rating of the machine now we have to see lap winding and wave winding so the difference between two is because of the different arrangement of conductors at the front end so connections at the front end of lap and wave are different as shown in the figure a and figure b so each winding we can arrange it progressively or retrogressively 
and each winding can be connected in simplex, duplex or triplex. Now progressive winding means it is a right handed winding. So the winding shown here it is progressive winding. So it progresses in clockwise direction. Whereas retrogressive winding it progresses in anti-clockwise direction. So it is left handed winding. So here the winding shown it is progressive. So if it is progressive in that case yc is equal to 1. If it is retrogressive then yc is equal to minus 1. Now for both lap and winding there are some important rules and these you should remember. So in both the windings front pitch and back pitch both the pitches are approximately equal to the pole pitch. So both YB and YF must be nearly equal to pole pitch so as to obtain maximum EMF. Then for both lap and wave winding you should remember that both front and back pitches should be odd. Both front and back pitches should be odd. Then number of commutator segments is equal to the number of slots or coils. So each coil is connected to one commutator segment and therefore number of commutator segments it is equal to number of coils or number of slots and the winding must be closed that is if you start from conductor 1 you should return back to conductor 1 without any break in between so the winding must be closed in case of both the windings lap winding as well as wave winding so these are important rules which you should remember so in this video we have studied the important terms related to the armature winding. Now in the next video we will see two types of windings that is lap winding and wave winding. Thank you. Stay home. Stay safe.